What's up everybody, Big V here. Today we're talking teams and we're gonna talk about what matrix do the greatest team leaders on the planet use to measure the effectiveness of their team. And to get this going, instead of just telling you, I wanna show you and I'm bringing with me Mahala Landon, team leader of the Rachel Kendall team. Superstar admin, amazing agent, acquired the team and now has put unbelievable systems and processes into place to make a massive difference in the lives of the team members she serves. So buckle up and get ready for Ms. Mahala. Paula Landon. Hey everybody, Big V here. It's Burl Workman. Today we're talking teams and we have a super guest as we talk about what to track and how to track things in our real estate business. Mahala Landon, all the way from North Carolina, the Rachel Kendall team. Mahala, say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. How are you? Everybody says they're great. Good. And as we go in and you're listening to Mahala, we're talking about what we track and how we track things. Use the comments and below. At the very end of the call, I'm going to give you the ability to download. I haven't figured out what my free giveaway is going to be, but I'll give you a great download by the end of the call. That's my promise to the every single one of these videos. So Mahala, Paula, tell us a little bit about your team. Oh, would love to. Thank you so much, Burl, for having me on. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. I am in the Triangle, which is the Raleigh, Durham, Cary market. We have a phenomenal culture-based team of full-time professional real estate agents, and we are equipped to do upwards of 400, 500 transactions. Last year, we did about 120 million, and we just love integrating all of our workman programs into our technology, and I think that's probably the point of today is just figuring out how we can track agent productivity and make sure that you have success years. Everybody, so everybody likes to track what they sold, right? And mm -hmm. it's kind of funny, but that's not really how we get results, is it? It is not. It is not. We got to look at those leading indicators. So what are some of the things that you track and how do you track them in your business? And like, what makes it, you said you have a productive culture. What does that mean? Productive culture of full-time real estate professionals. So we believe that if you're going to do something like help people with one of the most important decisions in their life, that you should be committed to it hundred percent. We have a mindset of we wake up every day unemployed until we get hired. So that means that one of our key metrics is somewhat obvious, but it's conversations. It's people that we're talking to. It's who we're meeting with. So we have to track very, very closely our appointments met, both for our buyer's agents and our listing partners. And for me, as a Zillow Flex um, partner, we are also looking at the composition of our business. And so we're looking at where those appointments came from and how we can help strategically work with each agent to design a business plan that works for them. So we're utilizing a lot of CSU for helping us implement and track our pillar work that we're doing within each of those lead sources. And that's really at an agent productivity level, but we can take it all the way through transaction management when it comes to CSU and what we're tracking in terms of performance. But those are our big metrics that we're looking at week to week. And our under contracts are things that we're looking at month to month. Well, let's have a little bit of fun. Show us some of the things you look at, like in a daily huddle. Let's talk about like a daily huddle. Don't judge me about all of my tabs because I definitely have a lot. <laughs> so when I'm opening up my Monday morning, so I do my business key, my key business numbers for workmen every Monday morning. So I'm running last week's where we were for our live listings, where we are for our units pending, our volume pending, and that's all going to be seen here at this bottom level dashboard. That's for me, right? And then I'm going to take it up into where I am for my buy team and where I am for my listing team in terms of the under contract. So what we've written this month, this is a year to date. One thing that we always forget about with CSU is that you have to make sure that these date ranges are accurate to what you're trying to measure. So if I I were to take this out to the end of the year, these numbers are going to shift and change. And then going back to what I was talking about before, these conversations, the bottom area down here, that's what we have a goal for in terms of our team. And then the top number is where we are actually. So looking at conversations, looking at where we are for appointments set, appointments met, top sides buyer, bottom side seller, and then taking it all the way across. And what I love about these radio dials is that I can go ahead and click inside of them. And this is going to give me some of that information about where our business is coming from. So if I go across here and I check out the lead sources, I sort it. We know that we're working our top 50. We know that we're working our Boomtown um, CRM. And so this lead source kind of gives me that breakdown of where those appointments are coming from. And then that helps us have a sales mix and coach to the gaps of where we want the business to come from. But if we're not looking at that weekly, daily, then we can't shift the ship and move it in a different direction. We'll be looking backwards in a rear view mirror and trying to make changes that way, which is always going to keep you behind. Paul on this screen just for a second. There's a few things. I'm happy to actually go back. I want to talk about a couple of things. Number one, this is a good year for a lot of agents. And this is your January, right? Yes, this is where we are right now for our January. So all of these are appointments met on the buy side. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And the other thing that we teach at Workman is we teach, you know, you want to be running at a 50% gross profit after your cost of sale. And so the gross amount paid to agent, is that what it goes out to the agent? And then this is the total GCI? Yes, absolutely. So looking at that cost of sales, it keeps it right front in mind. I mean, that's an easy number to figure out. We're almost right at 50%, which is exactly where we want to be on our buyer transactions. Right. Okay. Now let's go back to the previous screenshot where you had all the dials. And so this is, you went through this really fast. And so I want you, I want everybody to understand that, you know, the goal is to get 250 appointments set and meet 200 appointments. And we did 78. So we're off a bit. We are. We are. One thing that CSU does really well is it allows you to create team goals. And it also allows um, our individual agents to create goals. And that doesn't reflect when I'm looking at it at an admin level. So if I were an agent, that bottom number would just be based on the goals that I had for myself. But as a company owner, we're looking at goals in addition to the people that we have on our team. So we have some recruiters goals. This is actually giving me more of an insight of I need to hire some more people because as a team, even though the team set a goal of 493, me as a business owner, I have a goal of upwards of 600. So I'm looking to grow the team and develop it a little bit more. So that's a great you know, identifier that you pointed out and something that if you're an agent versus a team owner, you can look at two different ways. And so I look at this as it's not that your agents aren't working because we know we have good, hardworking, committed people. It's that you don't have enough of them to hit to the financial and or the revenue goals that you need for the year. Right. So if I think about a buyer's agent doing somewhere between eight to 12 buyer's appointments a month, that's where our team goal came from. Not necessarily the goals that the agents had, because like you said, we have a great culture of full-time professional agents and we're working with them to support them and their goals each and every day. You mentioned that you're, go back to your lead sources just for a minute. And there was a tremendous number of leads that were coming from referral and top 50. Tell us about how your team works their top 50. Oh man, it's an ongoing thing. We do it every day. We do great client events. We do three to four a year. So already at the beginning of the year, we're educating our team about opportunities to reach out to their top 50, to invite them to these, to coach and train their top 50 on how special they are to us and to make sure that when we're reaching out to them, they know that they're important and they know that we're planning on reaching out to them and who else would they want us to know and kind of coach them on how they can best support us and our business goals. So we pull that top 50 tracker up weekly in our team sales meeting where we're pulling it up, we're sharing wins. I had one agent on the team that ended December 2023 doing $12 million in sales just from her top 50. That was more than 60% of her business in 2023. So it's a really great thing to keep front of mind. And I always know that my agents are doing it, but if you don't track it, then you get to the end of the year and you really don't know what you've been working on. So it is definitely an important aspect, not just in CSU, but to keep track of the referrals that you're getting from your top 50. I love that. Matter of fact, I think that's what we're going to give everybody. Let's give everybody a copy of the 8651 ebook and they can download it. Just stay to the very end of the video and we'll give you a download to 8651, which is what Mahal is talking about in the top 50 that she uh, learned about in coaching. And so what are some of the other things that have been eye-opening to you as you started tracking the activities that generate the results? Yeah. Some of the other more cost per lead, I think every business owner really can resonate with that statement. Um, And so what have we been doing as a company? You'll notice that I get really, ex well, you don't know, notice my excitement, but I'm excited about direct traffic. That's where we're really driving our registration into our CRM. It's not just a boomtown pay per click. So we're working in-house on that traditional marketing, open houses, direct traffic, networking, which a lot of times comes from our top 50 work too, because if we're reaching out to past clients to figure out whether or not they should be on our top 50, right. then we might be getting some networking leads and sphere of influence. Uh, but mostly it's because we have the curse of abundance on our team uh, being a flex partner. We're so grateful for the opportunity, but we also want to make sure that we're maintaining a balanced business and that we're training our agents in a holistic way versus just being a full-time flex agent. We want them to have the opportunity to build that business plan, build four distinctive pillars that they can get 100% of their income from. You sound like a good workman coach, Mahala. <laughs> I mean, when you live it every day, it just kind of comes out of your mouth. <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. All right. So as we wrap this up, give me a couple of quick thoughts about coaching with Workman. What's your experience been like? And what do you tell the people that are watching this video about getting a Workman coach? What you get from Workman is exactly what every single agent or agent on a team needs because it's the systems and the structure. I can't express to you how many new agents or even senior agents that are recreating the wheel. They are just trying to take their ideas and put them into something that they can 
and implement. And they spend so much time trying to create that versus just plugging into stuff that is proven, plugging into a program that they can constantly feed from the wisdom of the crowd. They can find whatever answers that they're looking for. I tell people, if you're spending more than 30 minutes to 45 minutes trying to figure out how to do something, then you don't have the right tools in your toolbox. And that's really what you get out of Workman is you can take your brand, you can take your identity, you can take whatever it is that is your superpower, and you can plug it into those systems and processes, and you can implement fast so that you can stay in money-making activities and actually hit your goals. So fun. It's a, it's a fun it's a fun journey to watch the progression of our teams as they go through coaching, and it's been fun to watch you and watch you grow. Thank you for sharing what to track and how to track it. It's another episode of We're Talking Teams. Right here at the bottom of this video, click on the download. We'll give you a copy of 8651. You can also sign up for a free coaching consultation and let our team and, and sit down and try and determine whether or not we're a good fit. Thanks, everybody, and thanks, Mahala. Click the link below to get a copy of how Mahala uses Sisu with her top five specific things she does to use Sisu, what she measures in her business, and I'm going to give you our affiliate link so you can click on and get inexpensive, low-cost trial version of Sisu, and I'm also going to give you a video where Sisu explains how their product works. So click on the links below, enjoy Sisu, and look at how you can really track your business at another level.